Hey, welcome back to Star Technology, where in the last video, we made probably all of the small IV machines that I'm gonna need in preparation for all of these multi-blocks, and upgraded the clean room to be able to hold them all. I'm not sure if the clean room is actually big enough, because I've been... I've been planning in my head how this'll go, and width-wise, I don't have enough space to fit the three machines that need to be in here. But, if I stack them on top of each other, I can. I'm not sure how I feel about that though. And also it'd still be pretty cramped. I'll see. So I technically have enough space, but I do want to expand this further still. Anyway, I think the plan for this video is just continue what we've been doing the past two and just prepare as many multi blocks as we can. In the last video, I was told that the solidification array is not as good as I think it is because it can't handle multiple different molds. So <laughs> it's not great. And I think at that point, I'd rather just have a bunch of small machines instead of a big one. So I think I can knock that off the list, but all the others are definitely useful. And I'm wondering the order that I make these in, or rather how I make these. Because if I make the control blocks first, then I don't have their base machines. And I might need their base machines. So do I make the rest of the multi-block first? Probably. But the only one that I see myself explicitly needing would be the assembling factory. Because that's what makes all of these casings and a bunch of the ports and things too. So then maybe I make the assembling factory first so that I can then run everything else inside of that. Sounds like a plan. And I'm probably gonna have to make the multi-block before I make the control block because I need to keep the assembler to actually build things. So what do I need for this? I'm gonna need a lot of different input buses. How many different assemblers am I using right now? I'm using three unique circuits, so I guess three buses for now. So three input buses, I should only need one input hatch, one output bus, one energy hatch because it can't be overclocked, and a maintenance hatch. Yeah. I'm gonna need to make all of these probably MV, I don't think four slots is gonna be enough for most assembler recipes. Yeah, so three MV input buses. And I'll be fine with an LV output bus. And I have some spare IV energy hatches. I want to be running all of these multi-blocks on IV. So that should be all of the hatches I need. I need nine tempered glass. That's easy. And then the rest of it, assembler casings. And it wouldn't be 56. Is this number assuming a parallel control hatch? Probably. 54? Let's go 54. What do I need for this casing? I need a tungsten frame and stellite plates. And I may as well make a recipe for this. And I should be able to just set this going and not worry about it too much. It's gonna take a while though, because stellite takes a minute per bucket? A bucket and a half. Is there a minute per 10 ingots, I think that would be? Hmm, 15 minutes to make the whole thing. That's not too bad but I should probably be doing something else while I wait. And there's a few other things that I need to actually make the, the control block, and I have recipes for all of them, so it's more just setting things going and then waiting. Maybe I can get the A2 stuff? Well, I have everything I need. I can probably salvage the rest, and I'm not much closer to done. Why is it not making sulfur dioxide? I think all the sulfur got wasted. This is a problem I've had for a while, that I, I don't know of a clean way to solve this. All the hydrogen that should be combining with the carbon dioxide is instead combining with sulfur. So I'm just making a bunch of hydrogen sulfide when I'm trying to make sulfur dioxide or methanol. And since they're both recipes on circuit two, the only solution would be to make an entirely separate chemical reactor. So for the most part, I just deal with it, but maybe there's something obvious I've overlooked. Well, I'm almost halfway done with the stellite in that time, and I think everything else is waiting on the centrifuge, maybe? Yeah, thanks to the acid dust. No, that's the, the chemical bath, actually. This is quite slow. So then maybe I make the chemical bath next. 
that requires watertight steel. That's another long recipe. Might be a little quicker in the long run because it makes more ingots at a time. I don't know. But I'm still gonna have to wait until the stellite's done before I can do that. I guess I can still just make the recipes while I wait. Well, I'm starting to get a few of these casings now, so... I can start making the multi-block, I guess? And I had planned on putting most of them around here. Because if they're gonna be replacing the small machines... I don't know how much I need the small machines. So I can probably put the assembler up the back here. Like that. That fits quite nicely. I can just place in all of the blocks that I actually have. I think I'm gonna put the inputs on this side and then I think I'll do output maintenance energy oh wait one back and then the control block goes on top of the maintenance hatch which I can fix that up then I can set up this so then here I can have circuit one whatever the other circuits are on here so then there's three separate inputs I think I'm doing one four and eight and they all still use the same uh, input hatch, because that can be shared amongst them. And then when the time comes, I can move the pattern providers across. Oh, the assembling casings are all done. Okay, so I can probably finish off the multi-block then. Yes, I have exactly enough, because now I can make the control block. And that finishes it off. Please. Oh god. Minimum 40 casings. I have 54, that's fine. I didn't mess up the shape. And there's no limit on the buses. Oh, I think I did get the shape of this wrong. I need one more casing. I think that goes there. Yes, that's what I was missing. Okay, so then I just connect it into power. And then I can move over all the pattern providers. And I think it should be connected. I'll test with a cable. If it gets made, it's working. Yep, it's working. Okay, I was briefly worried that these pattern providers were gonna connect to each other and not to the ingredient buffers, but there's likely a thing in A2 that stops that from happening. <laughs> okay, that's the first multi-block, the assembler. Only six more to go. <laughs> And I said I should do the chemical bath next so I can get the tungsten quicker. So what do I need for that? I think I'll get the watertight casings going now. And across the two machines that take watertight casings, I'm gonna need like a hundred. So I'll make a hundred. And it's on circuit 15 in here. What else am I gonna need? I can get all of the hatches, no problem. I think I'll need two input buses, one input hatch and they can be LV that should be fine I do need an output hatch so output hatch output bus both of them LV I think that'll be fine two IV energy hatches and I should probably get maybe another energy converter and I think I'll go all the way to 16A if it's gonna be running multiple actually I don't think I need this to be 16 times converter it's not like I'm running all of them at once, the way I was with the blast furnaces. And I don't have to spend so much shellite on wiring. <laughs> okay, what else do I need for this chemical bath? Casings are on the way, so just the pipe casings? I think I should have a recipe for titanium frames at this point. So I just need to do this recipe three times. That's not bad. And I think that's all of the miscellaneous blocks that I'm gonna need to make this. And I think I'll take the ore washer now. And I can make that control block. So then I'm just going to be waiting for another, I don't know, close to 30 minutes for all of the watertight steel to go through. Because I've done it in the way that I have, it's making all the plates first and then it's going to go through all the frames. So it's not even making the casings as I go. Oh, well, I can wait. Now, where am I going to put this? I could put it down around here. Maybe on the side here. I think I'll put it around here. So I can get a lot of space back by removing a lot of these machines. And I'll probably put the crystallization chamber next to it. I'm just gonna shave off some of this now. You know, if I'm making all of the casings for the crystallization chamber as well, why don't I just prepare for that now too? If I've got time to kill. I'm gonna need to double up on most of my 
hatches. Can I make two energy hatches? Yes, I can. I'm just gonna have to switch this over to eight so I can actually make the tungsten steel casings. And then I should just leave that to make the, the IV energy hatches for me. I can make all the stuff that I need for the control block. And then three steel pipe casings. Those are super cheap. Uh, that's the crystallization chamber. And I've already got most of the casings. Yeah, that's just one more load. And then I'm done. I'm going to put it all the way up the back here. And it's five by seven. It's tight, but it fits. Would the crystallization chamber be shorter? Yes, it's only five. So I'll do the crystallization chamber here and then the chemical bath here because I can make a lot more space for myself here. And I think it's just built like this. Well, without the ports, it's built like that. Well, then I can put the energy around the back. I'll put the maintenance around the front and hmm, I don't have so much space to put these around. I think I might just barely be able to get it to fit Actually, I can just do it on the other side. I don't need to do them both facing each other. I can put the outputs facing each other because that doesn't really matter. And I think I have exactly enough casings for all of this and I didn't even count. I just guessed a hundred. Alright, I would like to make myself a bit more space here. And then I can set this all up. I'll set up the autoclave first with some power. And I'll just roughly connect these up so they've got some output. And let me see, the autoclave should be set up. So, yes, it is crafting Soda Squartz Crystals. Good. The autoclave is working. So then I can go back and finish setting up this. And is there any way that I can... Oh, hang on. That's the way this works. It's like the multi-smelter. I mean, I have room if I want to throw another one on, but I think right now it's it's better as a chemical bath than an ore washer. Well, actually, I could set it up for both and then just switch functionality. Yeah, it should be connected now. It's currently set to chemical bath, so I'll transfer the chemical bath recipes, and hopefully it works for that. I'll just make a bunch of tungsten, see how it does with the tungstic acid. Yeah. It's working, and it should be running a lot quicker now. Yeah, it's making it faster than it can import it. So I'm gonna need some speed cards. One seems to be enough. So that's two more of these multi-blocks complete. And I think I'm gonna keep procrastinating on the clean room ones and do the material press, because this one seems comparatively easier. It needs stress-proof casing. So I will get the recipe for that. And I think I am going to need the 50. Because it's just going to be the one input bus, one output bus, one maintenance hatch, two energy hatches. But I don't have the parallel control hatch. So yeah, 50 stress proof casings. And I can almost do that. I just need a little bit more cobalt. I'll just make a bunch of it. And then I can queue up the 50 stress proof casings. Oh, but the marriaging steel is going to take a while. That's over two minutes for... Oh, that'd be like 20 ingots. Oh, that's not terrible. Well, let's get the rest of this then. I need three tempered glass. Then I need all the hatches. And there's three steel gearbox casings. I need four steel gears? Yeah, there we go. And then I think just whatever I need for the material press control block which should not be that much. And there, that's the control block. Now I'm just waiting on the rest of the casings. And if in eight minutes it's done half of it, probably another eight minutes to go then. I think while I wait, I'm just gonna expand the clean room a little bit because I think I can do that. I'll just do one block on this side and one on this side. Anyway, the stress-proof casings are done. So I can make the large material press. How long is it? Seven? I think it should be able to fit here. Yeah, reasonably comfortably. And I think I know how this should go. Think like that? No? One in there? Yes. 
Okay, and the maintenance hatch is done. I'll just connect this up to power, and then into the ME system, and it should be all working. So what mode do I want it on? Probably the forming press. Don't need it on bender. Maybe compressor in rare cases. And I shouldn't need it on Forgehammer. So yeah, I'll just leave it on for forming press. I don't have any recipes for it yet, but just in case. So I've put it off long enough. It's time that I get these clean room multi-blocks done. And I guess I'll start with the circuit assembler. And this is going to take... Probably the 59? Because it can only have one energy hatch. Can't be multi block, uh, overclocked. I'm only going to need the one input bus and input hatch. Yeah, I think 59 of the assembler casings. I've already got one, so that's another 58. Oh boy, this is going to take a while. So I'll, I'll get it going. It's on circuit 14. Man, making the tungstic acid... What would that be, four times faster now? Oh, it's so worth it. Well, I should be able to just leave that going, and it'll eventually make all of the casings. What else do I need? Well, I'm gonna need all the hatches, and four more tempered glass, and six tungsten steel pipe casings. It's the same as all the others. It's just out of tungsten. And then the last thing before the rest of the casings is the assembly line grating. And I need that for some of the others, I hope it's not expensive. Oh, no, that's super easy. Just gonna need a bunch more iron bars. That should be enough. And then I can just make all 10 of them. So then the last thing is just whatever is needed for the control block, which is a decent amount of stuff. And that should be everything I need. I just, I hesitate to get rid of the circuit assembler just yet. Wait a minute, I don't even have the IV one, what am I going on about? So I can't make the circuit assembly yet. Okay, I guess I'll just move on to the engraving laser then. I might still need to wait for the stellite to finish before I can actually make the other things. But what do I need for the engraving laser? Because I should actually have most of the things I need for that. I'm going to have a lot of input buses on this. How many wafers do I make right now? I need CPU, RAM, MPIC, so three of them right now, and I'm gonna need a few more in future. I think I'll just cover my bases and put five on it, and pretty much everything else for the engraving laser I've already got. So I've just gotta make the control block and 60 casings. Actually, those 60 is assuming one input bus, one energy hatch. I've got one extra energy hatch, four extra buses, so then 55? Well, I can set it going because the shellite is done now. I think it's on 13? 12. 12, that's what it's on. How long does molten titanium tungsten take? Eh, 19 seconds, but it only makes three ingots, so it's still going to take about 15 minutes. To smelt all of this. Well, is there anything special I need for the multi block? The control block? Um, I need another IV emitter, but I have set up recipes for a quantum star on my own, and I do also just have a spare one. So I should just be able to make all the things without much difficulty. <laughs> I just need to make the tantalum carbide plates myself. I just need four ingots, and I can get the double plates no problem. And yeah, that's everything else. I'm still probably going to need the engraving laser, so I'm not going to turn it into the control block just yet. So then that's everything that I need for the large engraving laser, except for all the casings. That's going to be another <laughs> 10 minutes. So then a little over 10 minutes later, all of the casings are done. So I'll just grab the engraving laser, and I may as well take the pattern provider with me too. And I can make the control block, and I can get to building it in here. And I think I might barely be able to squeeze it in here. And then, uh, no, I would have to expand that wall out a bit further if I wanted to squeeze in the circuit assembler. Oh well, I don't have to worry about that for a little while. I'm just gonna build up this multi-block 
it's reasonably simple. I think for the hell of it, I'm going to put all of the input buses along the top here. And then sure, I can put the power there and output there. Why not? Maintenance there. <laughs> Just finish off the multi-block. Yeah, and it worked. So I'll only bother with pattern providers for the three lenses that I actually use right now. And I'm going to have to go grab some more shellite. Because I'm going to have to wire this up a little bit differently. So then the chemical reactor can still get power. And I'm getting power into the engraving laser. And just do the maintenance hatch. And I think it's working. So then I should be able to make some wafers. Let me see if I want 10 more RAM wafers. Hmm, that's not looking promising. Oh no, it's running. Oh, it's just... Hang on. Oh, distinct buses wasn't on. Okay, I just made the wrong wafers. It's working. There was just that small problem. Okay, so that's the engraving laser. So then there's only one more multi-block that I can actually make right now. The cutting saw. So how many casings am I going to need for this? Because I may as well get that going now. I'm only going to need the one input. So then a uh, second energy hatch, but also no parallel control hatch. So yeah, 77. I'll just make the recipe for it. And how long is it going to take to make 77? Oh, I need a bit more molybdenum. I have some spare molybdenite. Okay, that's enough. I just need to set it going. And it's on circuit 16. So it might take three minutes to do this once. It's like 30 ingots. So it probably cancels out to be another 15 minutes or so. Well, I'll just get the rest of the stuff that I need for this. Hatches and the tempered glass, that's simple enough. The main thing here is slicing blades. Oh, these themselves need cutting casings? Oh god. So I need to make another three. Uh, actually, only another two because I'm making 78 casings. But I can still make the rest of this stuff. I need six of them. So that's three IV motors, nine tungsten carbide ingots, and 48 ultimate ingots. I need to turn the tungsten carbide into plates and the ultimate into gears, and then that's enough. And I'd already made the two cutting casings, so I can make some of the blades, but it's gonna be a while until I get the rest of them. So that's probably it. I just need to see what I need to make the control block, and it's not that much. It's mostly just these tungsten carbide buzzsaw blades, but those really aren't that bad. Just need eight plates, and there we go, two buzzsaw blades. So then I could make the control block. I'm just gonna hold out a bit on getting rid of the cutter, just in case I still need it. Well, it's already been about 10 minutes on the casings. Oh, it's looking like it's gonna be another 20 minutes before the rest of it's done. So another 20 minutes later, that's all the casings done. And I also made the last slicing blades. So I just need to make the control block. And then I should be able to build this in here. I'm just wondering where, because I checked it out while I was waiting, and with this size, I can barely squeeze the circuit assembler in here, and then barely squeeze the cutting saw along this way. And I'd have about two blocks here, and then whatever's in the middle. So I can barely squeeze all of this in, but I'm not going to have the circuit assembler in here for a while, so I'm wondering if I just slot the cutting saw in here now? So then I don't have to move all of this? I think that's what I'll go for. Although annoyingly, the control block's going to be covered. I think I can briefly break the engraving laser, just so I can place the control block. And then what does this look like on the inside? I've got slicing blades like that, tempered glass like that, and then I think I just cover the rest of this. And you know what? I think, just because it's kind of funny to do it this way, I'm going to put the energy hatches there. Why not also put the maintenance hatch there? And oh, I was going to try and squeeze the input bus and hatch here as well, because it'd just be funny. But I don't think I can. I can put the output there. Oh, actually, I think I can do this. It's so dumb. But that would work. <laughs> and then I can finish off the multi-block. Yeah. 
Why have I actively decided to make something so terrible? This isn't gonna work if I want to put a pattern provider on this input bus, but by the time I start needing that, I'll probably move the cutting saw. So I just need to do the maintenance, and then the cutting saw should be operational? Yeah, it does have power. Oh, I can't use the other hatches to look at the control hatch the way I can with the way I can by doing that. I just need to make sure that I've actually connected this. And then if I just order up some bolts, I can't go see if the machine's running, so I've just got to hope that it outputs. It did, I just forgot to put an import bus on it. But there we go, that's the cutter operational too. So, that should be all of the multi-blocks that I actually wanted. I'll get the circuit assembler later when I actually get the IV circuit assembler, but most of the remaining machines I don't need. Maybe if I start using the arc furnace a lot, I can make that. Maybe if I ever use a brewing vat, I can make that. And maybe if the polarizer starts being a problem, I can make the large electromagnet. Uh, and maybe, hmm, the distillery could be good. But I still think those four, I might make an IV machine for them later down the line, but they're never the bottleneck, so they're not as useful. Well, I was expecting that to take a long time, and it did. It's taken me over four hours to make all of these multi-blocks. Most of it just waiting on the blast smelter. But I'd still say that it was worth it. This is some very, very good progress here. There might be a few more multi-blocks down the line, but I think this is all I'm going to need for the next, I don't know, five, six episodes. And it'll be a, enough of an upgrade to let me carry on with the rest of this. I think the next goal would be to get the parallel hatches. I don't know if there's a quest for them. Doesn't look like it. But the parallel hatches are going to be quite a problem. Because they take a lot of LUV circuits. And eh, that's not too far out of the way. And once I get them, I can make the IV circuit assembler and then make that multi-block. And once I've got that, I can make the next tier of solar panels. And I think that would be everything that I planned on initially for IV progress. So then from there, just finish out the rest of the tree. Prepare for LUV? Yeah. We'll see how that goes. But that's enough for this video. I'm just rambling on at this point, filling time that I don't have. So I'm going to call this here. Very satisfied with this progress. I honestly wasn't expecting to get all of the multi-blocks done in one video. But it really was just mostly waiting. So yeah, we'll see what happens next time. That's it for now. Bye.